everybody. Welcome to Creator's Call. Creator's Call Shop here on YouTube. This is Marcy and I'm filming this little segment right here for Stephanie Shalansky. This is for you Stephanie at Coffee Paper Scissors. It's not only you that's got the piles on the floor right now and the crazy mess going on. Hopefully this will help you feel better. <laughs> right at the moment I am preparing to show you my final haul video of the year. So my desk, my table here doesn't count because I just cleared that off so I could do it. But here you go, Steph, here's my, here's my lamp too. <laughs> so welcome everyone to Creators Call Shop. Today I'm going to share with you my final thrift store haul of 2020. My haul is currently in those two boxes right at the moment. So I'm going to get that unloaded and ready to share. Why don't you guys go and grab yourself a drink, get comfy, and I'll be back with you right after this. Today's haul video comes to you from a little thrift store that we visited in October. My son-in-law had a school break and so we went and got together with them and visited, kind of just got away at a little bit Airbnb in Washington. This little thrift store is just at the foot of Mount Rainier in a tiny little town called Packwood. It's the only thrift store for miles and miles and miles, so they get lots of donations. This will be a little bit of a longer video because it is a haul, and there's lots to show you today, so I'm very excited about that. I am going to ask you to stick to the end, and then I will show some pictures of where we were staying, the cute little town, and some really nice footage of Mount Rainier. We went up to the very top. There are several drives you can take around the mountain. And on one particular day, we went up to the very top and took some great footage. It's my first time ever actually seeing a glacier. It's just some beautiful footage and I share that with you at the very end. I have to say, I think now I understand what other people get to experience when they go thrifting. And I think honestly, maybe the prices in my area are high. <laughs> And the reason I say that is because I found these incredible prices there. And so as I go through, I'll try to mention some of them for you. So the first thing I wanted to share with you, I just found a whole bunch of little golden books. They had children's books 20 for a dollar. The cheapest I can find is like 49 to 50 cents a, a book at the Idaho Youth Ranch. So to find 20 for a dollar, I made sure that I found 20 books. Because, or, yeah, there were, tw yeah, 20, 20 for a dollar. <laughs> Sorry, it just boggles my mind. So anyway, I found quite a number of good books. And because this was a church-sponsored thrift store, um, I found some really good children's Bibles with beautiful images. So look at that one. Isn't that gorgeous? So that will be really fun. It's got kind of a padded cover, so you know, that would make a really nice journal cover. Looks like there's a sticker, gotta get rid of. Found this Ella Children's Dictionary, which I have seen these in other people's videos, but I've never actually seen this particular version or edition. And I like it. It's just got really fun pictures and, and nice print, and it looks like a real dictionary, but it's definitely gauged for children. And it's the Webster's Elementary Dictionary. There's that, and then I found a few coloring books. Actually, this might not have been at the thrift store. I also, on this trip, took back some books that my daughter had been saving from childhood. At one point, she was going to go into education, and so we were saving all kinds of books for, she wanted to teach English for a future classroom, and then um, she did not go into English. <laughs> she got a different degree instead, and so I have all these boxes of books, and now that they've moved to Washington, I wanted them out of my garage. Look at this one, though. I did find this one there. Isn't that great? So that'll be great in a farm journal. So, yeah, I took her back all these boxes of books 
that she had. We sorted through them and then we um, donated back the ones that she did not want. We donated back to that thrift store after we had been. But yeah, 20 bucks for a dollar. It's incredible. It just blows my mind. Children's books. I like these. These have big pages and gorgeous artwork. So, yeah. And then this. This one I was very excited about. Christmas. American Annual of Christmas Literature and Art. So maybe next year, I have lots of ideas for what kind of journals I wanna make next Christmas, but I have quite a number of these large size books and I think it'd be really fun to just make giant art journals or giant, just giant journals with all these big pages. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna zoom you in for a second. Isn't that neat? The artwork and the colors. I think this might be an ideals book. Let me check when I'm done flipping. But lots of pretty pages and lots of pretty pictures, lots of pretty art. So we can, we, meaning me, <laughs> you can enjoy it. I'll, I'll put it together. You guys can enjoy it. Let's see, copyright 1978. I don't, I have my contacts in, so small print right now today is going to be a trick. Augsburg Publishing House. Isn't that neat? I don't I don't think it's an ideal. Oh, look, it's part of a series. So volume, what is this? 46, volume 46. Okay, um, this is a good example of Roman numerals when I get ready to teach you guys. So yeah, isn't that beautiful? So there's some children's books. And then I found a couple of ring binder style ones, which as you know, I just have this weakness. I don't know why, but now I'm just starting to look for ones that are different. But this is a sewing one. Isn't this neat? So it's even got the, the uh, measuring tape. This is plastic. I'm not, not a real big fan of plastic measuring tapes. Oh, I see it's stuck to the, stuck to the little cardboard. Cool, but I am a fan of free measuring tapes, so isn't that neat? So this is all just fun pages with patterns, and it was called Patterns Unlimited. Look at that, those will make awesome, awesome pages to add into pretty much any journal that I have going out there, so. And it's like a course, you know? I think, let's see. I'm just going to see if I can find a copyright. I think this is the front. Is that the front page and they cut it off? I do know. It's a mystery. If I find out more, I'll tell you when I actually get ready to use the book. But yeah, all these great images. So, oh, here we go. Oh, see, more Roman numerals. Let's see, 1971. And 1979, Patterns Unlimited. Hints you may find helpful. Oh, it had, this is a special tape measure. Look, reading the special tape measure. Oh, the magic scale. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to dive more into this. It's just been sitting in the box waiting for me to share it. Oh, aren't these neat? But look, you could cut these out for paper dolls. It's very 70s. <laughs> oh, so fun. Oh, so many pretty images. Ooh, and there's some brides. Okay. Moving on before I waste all my time on this really cool binder. But yeah, that was Patterns Unlimited Ink. I have never seen anything like this. So it was in that thrift store. I have store. seen these before, these Family Circle Weekend Crafts, but they're like empty, nothing in them. And this one actually has all of the dividers and the pages. And I know sometimes they can come with pockets. Out of frame, there we go. Oh, look at that. Christmas one. I know that they come with these pockets and I have seen people in haul videos have their pockets still in the book and this one has a couple. So yeah, it's got fun little, more fun stuff to make pages. I think I need to focus on a series of just giant journals like, look at there's a Halloween witch pattern. I've got lots of big papers. This has little things that were cut out of it. Look, they cut it on the old paper. It has the grid on it to trace around. I remember seeing that a long time ago. I don't know 
I don't know if anyone's more into sewing these days than me. Um, they still use that kind of stuff in sewing at all. So I was pretty excited about this and I don't remember what I paid for it, maybe $2.99? These were all a certain price. They were the same price because they were in the arts and crafts area, so um, I don't exactly remember. So this little thrift store was teeming with people. And not, you know, everybody, everybody was distancing, but it was quite busy, so because it's the only one for miles and miles around. But the one thing I found there that I'm also super excited about is a bunch of Reader's Digest. And then I went I went to another thrift store and found two I found three more. So these I got these guys for 50 cents a piece. And these I got at my local Vets for Success. And these I think are a buck ninety nine, which is a good price around here. I believe that's what I paid for them. Let's see my I need the stickers, but look at these neat covers. So what I was thinking I might do is save the ones that I'm really loving because I have a few more out in my garage and then offer these up in my shop if you guys think you'd be interested because there are so many cool book covers. When my daughter, she said, oh my goodness, mom, you're going to take them apart. And I said, yeah, look at these gorgeous covers. And so she was getting a little mad, but I said, you don't realize that when I was growing up, these things were like <laughs> leaves on trees. Everybody had them and people couldn't wait to get rid of them. And I didn't realize at that time how neato all the covers were because you always only ever saw the spines. So anyway, I said, I told her not to mourn that they were gonna get loved and have a new life. So this is my plan is to have some in my shop and maybe I'll turn them into kits or something. I don't know. What do you guys think? One of the best things I found was this little sewing area, and I've, I've got two bags here full of linens and full of sewing things, and let me, I'm just going to kind of dump them one at a time and show you what we've got. Everything that I am showing you here, I got for $29. $29. I took accounting, so I round up. <laughs> now, this doesn't look like much, but I they were all little pieces and parts, and then I just shoved them all into bags for the ride home, so I put them all in together. So I got a ton of laces and trims, and I was trying to focus on colors that I did not have before. And I, I don't know why, but for some reason, red is hard to find. So I was really stocking up on red. But what it looked like to me was that they had, um, if they got clothing in that wasn't salvageable or resellable, aren't these cool? I mean, everything was like 10 cents and um, 20 cents. It was unheard of. Incredible. Which is why I was going crazy in there. Um, let me finish my thought. But what I was trying to say was that everything, it looked like a lot of these trims had come off of clothing. Maybe they took them apart. If they couldn't sell the clothing, they at least salvaged the trim off of it. So some of these are really, really neat. Found some threads. I was trying to focus on colors I didn't have. And also, this is a vintage tape measure, and this is not a plastic one. This has more of the fiber. See? Ten cents. It's like it's never gotten used. But I have been on a hunt for a new measuring tape for sewing because my old one from when I was nine had fallen apart. So, they are hard to find, <laughs> but I prefer the... I prefer the fabric kind, not the plastic kind. Call me a purist. I don't know. So they also had, in one little section, these little bags of buttons, and they'd already been color coordinated. I didn't have to do this. So I just picked buttons that looked interesting. Like, look at this one. Isn't that pretty? Big old coat button. And I tried to pick, again, colors that I'm pretty sure I'm low on, or that are interesting. I love these big old coat buttons. So somebody there loves to go through. They, I think the sewing area might be her area that she keeps track of. Because when I went to check out and I had all these laces, the lady behind the counter said, oh yeah, so-and-so will be so excited to see somebody buying all of these. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I was so excited to buy them. So I guess we're both happy. This one looks like a vintage one. It also looks like it's degrading a little bit. 
My friend Carol and I went to a meeting of the Button Club last fall. They had been at a craft fair or something and Carol found them, so we went to their meeting and we learned a little bit about buttons. And one of them is, is that you want to store them in glass or wood, not in metal. And I have a vintage button collection from my, from my husband's aunt. And of course it's stored in an old metal tin. And have I removed them from the tin yet? No. <laughs> In fact, at that point in time, I was we were redoing everything in the house and getting carpet and everything was crazy everywhere else and I couldn't even find my buttons to take to the meeting, but we learned a few things that buttons can break down and they can get sick and then when they're sick, you have to clean them out of your other button stash because if you don't, they will make your other buttons sick, just like COVID. <laughs> okay, this one I like because it was black. Let me um, open this one. Some of these I think may have just like come from Joanne's. This is a simplicity trim. Like maybe from Joanne's fabrics or even Hobby Lobby. Because I recognize this one. See, that's a Hobby Lobby trim. I never seem to be able to find it. So when I go to Hobby Lobby, but I don't look that hard either. It seems like it's always out. And that's because all of the crafters love it. So that was exciting to find that roll. This one. Oh, look at that. Isn't that called Venetian lace? Isn't that pretty? That'll be gorgeous on all kinds of things. So yeah, I hit the mother load on the laces. Um, this one it was a buck fifty. Now there were some that were a little bit more, but almost all of these little bits and pieces were like ten cents and maybe twenty cents. What's this one? That one was twenty cents. It's a nice eyelet trim. This one, I was also trying to find um, trims that were wider so I can make pockets and things. I think I've got that upside down. Here's the right side up, maybe. Isn't that neat? There's quite a lot on this. Wrapped around a toilet paper tube. I may have to take these and rewrap them. So buck fifty for that. Yeah, that one had three and three quarters yards. Eight twenty must have been donation day that they took them in or something. I'm not sure. That's my guess because it was on the books too. So yeah, this little thrift store is only open a few days a week. Oh, I should have used that in my Christmas journal, my Dickens journal I just finished. Oh well. Guess I'll have to make another one. Oh shucks. Okay, this bag, this now look, this one is old. This is definitely 70s. Look at that. That beautiful. So before we came home, I kind of organized all these and shoved them into little baggies. So whatever was in this bag was 10 cents. And I don't know. Let's see, they were all individually done. So here's another really pretty one. 10 cents. These prices were crazy. Crazy great. <laughs> so there's that. And then here's another, and this is a really pretty um, crocheted trim. Mm, let's see, does that say 25 or 95? Looks like 25, 25 cents. And I think this is hand crocheted and I suspect it was off of something, like they cut it off of a pillowcase or something. So it was very smart of them to salvage the parts they could and they, I took quite a lot of their stash, so. Everyone was happy. <laughs> Some of these are just little short pieces, but when they were short like this, then they just shoved them in bags. Look at that. Let's see, I've spent like eight minutes now showing you trim. One thing I was excited about was this little wax, beeswax thingamajiggy that um, quilters use. And this was only 25 cents. I kind of use crochet thread primarily for binding my books, but then I run it through this to get a little bit of wax, and that's what these grooves are for, is you just run your twine through there, and you wax it up a little bit, and then it's easier to, to sew your signatures together with. And then I found this brand new, brand new needle book. Now, it, this could be reproduction. I don't know. But I like the little sweet lady on it. Where's it made? Made in Japan. I don't know. 
It's not like they have copyrights on some of these, but it is intact. So this may become ephemera, like when I do a sewing journal. Let's see, do I have any other bags of lace? Anybody else notable here? There's that. This one, 75 cents. It's just a tiny little trim. I don't think that one was hand sewn. This one I like because um, I just like the pattern along the edge. And it's kind of an eyelet, but like a really overdone eyelet. It's interesting. This, really tiny, but very pretty pastels. Make sure you're focusing back in, okay. And for some reason, another color that I have a hard time finding is green. Like the dark, just plain old Christmas green, like this shade. So if you'll recall in my fall journal, I had some of this, but it was kind of an olive green shade that I had rated my mom's sewing box for. And I'm gonna guess that this is about as old. This is probably also 70s, because it kind of looks and feels like the other one. So I think some of these just came out of a sewing box. And then here's a little strip of this. Also, I used all my other kind up in the fall journals. So there's a little bit, and then you just weave your Weave your flat ribbon through where the holes are, any color you want. Here's a pretty yellow. This little yellow eyelet, isn't that pretty? Oh, and this one, that one's neat. It feels old. This one, I snagged, come here. He's all by himself, he can get out of there. He was five cents, but it's a big, Fuzzy rickrack. Look at that. Really fuzzy, like velour. I've never seen velour rickrack before. And then this one was just a trim, like a braided trim. I think he was like five or ten cents. But look at that. Really pretty purple. Let's grab the other bag. Move along, move along. This one was, this is an older one, 25 cents. And it already has the ribbon in it. And again, it's just this nice, thick, heavy quality crochet. I don't think this one was hand done. It's like mercerized cotton, because you can tell it's got the shine on it. Oh, what did I just drop? Is that a pin? Oh, and here's some more of it. Yes. So. Yeah, that, that was very exciting. Okay, yeah, that was a pin. I think I'll put you in here to hold you shut. Okay, and then I went around the corner and there's a huge back room. Anyway, and they had a lot of linens and doilies back there. It's where the children's books were. And then I bought myself, like, um, found some Rubbermaid and stuff for myself personally and was able to bring some of our leftovers leftovers home in it. So here's a nice wide one. These are all on the same card. It's almost like somebody was doing, you know, did like lingerie or wedding or something and just had all their samples on the card. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I have one I did actually pay. I think it was like $4 for it, but I felt like it was worth it because it was an unusual color and it was really wide. So this one, there's this one. This one, I love, this whole thing was a dollar. And again, I got it because of the red, but it also just has kind of a different feel. Like if you were doing, if you were to do like a Heidi journal or some of the um, little golden books where Corinne Malvern is the artist and she just does these really pretty decorative borders. This is what this makes me feel think of. So I got it just because it was different and it was a dollar. There's a lot on there. Here's a doily. And all these doilies, I'm trying to remember, they were an awesome price. They were like four for a dollar. <laughs> it's crazy. And of course, you know, as journalers, junk journalers, we don't care too much if one has a hole or not because we can cut it up to do other things. This one was 50 cents. 
Oh, it's 50 cents because there were three of them. That's right. Look at these have a real Art Deco 1900s, early 1900s vibe. Look at that. And that one is definitely, that was the back. This is the front. Nope, this is the front. Anyway, this one's definitely hand, hand embroidered. All three of these. This one's just kind of a plain eyelet trim, but for pockets and stuff. Oh, there goes my doggy. I think there's a delivery van out front. This one was embroidered with someone's initials. There's a word for this type, the linen, and then it had these little um, holes along the edge, whatever that's called. Um, I can't think of the name of it. I heard it once and I was, I wanted to remember it. Okay, this is 25 cents. This looks like, this is a piece of eyelet, very wide piece of eyelet trim. So I can cut this as wide as I want and make pockets or belly bands or whatever, but then I still have all this muslin up here. It's either muslin or a very fine cotton. I can do stamping on it. There's that. Okay, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, and I like the colors. Let me tell you, anything that I thought was going to be usable, this would be a really pretty journal cover. Also, some of these I would like to scan before I cut them up. So if anyone is good at knowing how, I know I just scan it on my scanner, but then do I have to do anything to it to turn it into a printable? Like, am I supposed to edit it? Do I just scan it at a certain size? How do I put multiple ones on a page? That I don't know, but some of these are really pretty and worthy of being scanned. There's another one. A lot of these dresser scarves and a lot of the gorgeous hand embroidery and just different color patterns, you know, color combinations that you just don't see every day. And then you still have all of this in the middle that you can use lots of ways or even use these as like cut them into strips and do the snippet rolls. It's got the hand crocheted trim, edge, hand crocheted edge. There we go. Whoops, upside down. Now this one has stains and again it could be tea dyed so that wouldn't matter. Um, it's got a stain on this end. I think this end was fine. Not pretty. Again, it's kind of got that whole Art Deco-y vibe, 1915, 1920s. And then this is a heart. So pretty and all the hand, hand crochet, you know, those crocheted edges, just so pretty. I'd go learn to crochet, but I'm afraid my vision might not, <laughs> might not cooperate at this late stage. Now, okay, this one I love, because look at these edges which you might want not want to display it in your home on a dresser, but this would make a gorgeous journal cover, wouldn't it? And down here at the other end, I think there's a little staining in the middle. Yeah, right here. Again, I could scan this before I cut it up. Here's some more eyelet. This was a huge piece, huge piece. This one was $4, but I got it because it is massive and because I can never find eyelet. I used to sew and make cute things. I used to have a skirt I made out completely out of this eyelet cotton. I used to wear it like in 10th grade when I was a sophomore. I remember specifically wearing it because I made it myself. It was a very simple elastic waistband, kind of a straight skirt. So look at that. Oh, this is the right side. Here, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Then I found these quilt squares. I really love these. There are two different bags. I picked the one that um, I kind of, they were kind of the same, so I only took one because you don't need two of all of them. But what they have in here on these quilt squares are verses, scripture. So this one has the Lord's Prayer. And this one, I mean, they're all very basic, like 1 Corinthians 13 and... Psalm 23. See? Won't those be great? Those will make great either journal cover, journal page. Oh, he's ah, he's unraveling on me. There we go. This one is, yep, 1 Corinthians 13. Just 
13, 4 through 8, and verse 13. So love is patient, love is kind. That neat. So, ooh, I could put this in a, in a hope journal because I've had a vote for the hope journal. So while I'm thinking of it, let me just say, if you watched my last video, I asked for votes on some of my next projects, and I'm getting a few in. So hope was one of them. So um, go back and watch that one. And then you can leave your vote on that video or this video. And you can help me pick my next few projects. This one, oh yeah, Ecclesiastes 3. And I love Ecclesiastes. In fact, I have in mind to do an Ecclesiastes 3 journal. I know that's <laughs> not your typical, typical kind of journal. But I love, that's probably one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Is Ecclesi well, the whole book of Ecclesiastes and then Ecclesiastes 3 specifically. And then it has these other little pieces that were along the edge. And so these would make great pockets as well. You know how I was working on those? No, you don't know. In an upcoming video <laughs> that you will see, <laughs> I am working on making fabric pockets. So you can watch that. But yeah, I could definitely do these. I wish I'd, if I had done this haul video sooner, I could have been doing the, working on those in that ver video. Now also, again, in my Jerusalem journal, all these strips were cut out to edge those pieces of scripture and those blocks, those quilt blocks. And so these will be lovely in my Jerusalem journal because they have that feeling, just have that vibe. So now some of that needs to get washed. So it's high time I did this video, let me tell you. Ooh, okay, so here's another bag, lots of doilies. I don't remember specifically how much I paid for all of these little guys. But they were, you know, so many for such and such a price. So I don't remember. This one's kind of like a collar. Lots of doilies. I don't know if you can tell. There's a little tiny eyelet pattern. See that? This one is really stiff. It, it didn't quite, kind of got out of shape a little bit, but if you put it on a cover and, you know, added some other stuff, you can cover up that side. But it's been starched. There's an applique. This was, what's that say? 20 cents. Applique with a rose. So there you go in my rose. Rose themed journal. This one's really thick. This would make a great pocket. It also needs to be washed in the worst way. Kind of is like that collar. And then this tiny little one, just a heart. And then I found some rickracks because I don't know why, but finding rickrack is hard and the jumbo rickrack is even harder. Well, new or used. So just trying to get some good packages. I like that yellow. And then this one. Here, I found this on the floor, it had fallen down. So this little um, roll of lace, lace trim was $3. This is the one I was talking about just a few minutes ago. The peachy color that's really wide. This is probably four inch wide, maybe even four and a half. And it's also a really nice unusual color. So nice to have that in mustache. I, I am finding like things like peach, orange, coral, green, particularly like a true green or a Christmas green, um, the reds. It's weird because they're hard to find and yet like if you're looking at scrapbook paper, green is all you can ever find. <laughs> green comes in every pack. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so this is a hand done napkin but it's a tiny little napkin. It's probably a five inch square, maybe. I found this, this is a quilt block. I love that, so for a hearth and home style journal. And then I found a bunch of um, napkins. And I don't remember how much these were, but I liked, I picked up all the ones with pretty fabrics because a napkin is just fabric. <laughs> so for pockets or maybe journal covers, I think. Sometimes my decorating style is still stuck in the 90s, but 
that's neither here nor there. Isn't that pretty with that green? And then, oh, I have two of those. I can go through this after this and figure out what I'm washing. And then this one I really like, so that'd be really pretty. Anything that has to do with cooking, canning, farming, any of that. And then I have this, which I believe was an old slip. This was a dollar. Let's see if I can read this note. It says, what do you say? Purchased value over $8. Okay, is that? But I paid a dollar. This off an old slip, I think, or it's made this way and you cut in the middle to add to a slip. That's really pretty. It looks really old, doesn't it? And then a little strip of this gorgeous, like a, I don't know what you call that, dotted Swiss? Is that what that is? That little pattern with the eyelet? And this is a really wide, like four inches maybe, four inch wide piece. So now let me do a quick Make sure that was, I think that was everything, everything I got there. I wanted to show you too, um, since my daughter was getting rid of all those books, I helped myself to a few of them, and this is the one I'm most excited about, because she had picked this up somewhere ages ago, and she didn't want it. I was keeping my fingers crossed, I didn't hint, I didn't beg, I was just hoping, hoping that she didn't want it, and she didn't. <laughs> so, it is mine. Plus it has a hole in it, I mean... She wouldn't have been able to use that. Oh, wait a minute, it's from Grandma Harrison, Katie. Caitlin, love you, from Grandma H. So there must have been a cover that we're missing. Oh, for my mother-in-law, how sweet. Regardless, it still has a hole there, it's missing the cover. So we'll, we'll figure out how to add that into something. Christmas 95, okay, so she was a year old. See, I don't even remember her getting this book. I really don't remember it, but Grandma Harrison gave it to her. She was a year old. Aw, my baby. Okay, anyway, you don't need to listen to me go down memory lane. It says cards, $4, so maybe this, maybe this was it. Just ripped off the staple. So it must have been in the card section. I don't know where she would go. She, she had a gift shop she liked to go to, and she always found the prettiest stationery and cute little things, but I don't... I don't remember where it was, and I'm sure it's not there now, so. Let's see, oh, let's just do some quick, quick announcements really fast. So first, I wanna welcome um, some more subbies. There's Linda Magruder, Arts and Crafts, Connie Bottoms, and Maggie Stoller. So this is gonna be my last shout out to new subbies in 2020. And um, from here on in, I'm just gonna welcome everybody collectively as a group. So I'm very excited. I, I am very thrilled that all of you are here and that you've chosen to support me this year. I'm almost a year on YouTube, so that's pretty exciting. A uh, reminder that the shop is now closed. I'll reopen it in the middle of January. I'm not sure yet if I'll do it like President's Day weekend or right after that, because I like to have that whole month off. So. Anyway, just keep checking back, and also, if you haven't favorited my shop on Etsy, give it the heart. Click the heart, and then it'll tell you when my shop is open. If you haven't subbed yet to my channel, but you've been consistently watching, I love you. If you would please subscribe. <laughs> that really helps me grow. And of course, give the thumbs up while I'm thinking about it. And then click the notification bell. After you subscribe, I think is when that bell shows up, and then that notifies you uh, every time something is, is posted, uploaded, or... Every time I sneeze or wiggle my nose, they, they alert you. <laughs> okay, um, even though the shop is closed, if there's a journal that you're interested in and it still hasn't sold, you know, just message me. I'll check my messages. A uh, reminder that commercials may start airing on my channel and all over YouTube, and I have no control. It's not good as a viewer, so I, I deeply feel your pain. So the sooner I get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, that'll be my goal for 2021. 2021. Uh, my goal for 2020 was just to actually get you a video every week. So I'm very happy that I have been able to do that because honestly, that I didn't know if I could. <laughs> True confessions. 
True Confessions of a New YouTuber. My kids are not coming for Christmas from Washington because, well, you know, Washington and Oregon took this virus seriously and Idaho, don't know what we're doing here, but we have rising cases every day and they would have been here by now, like probably today, but because our cases are going up and because we have so many anti-maskers in this state, they're not coming. So yeah, that's that. We, we will miss them. We'll FaceTime with them on Christmas morning. I sent off their stockings today. They're stocking stuffers, so you can all open stockings with us just via video. Remember to vote on my upcoming journals. I already said that. Yeah, so we do have some votes in on the upcoming journals. So, so far I have two votes for Mimi's Prayer Garden. And of course with that, I'm going to do Poppy's Praise Book. So they'll, they'll get done simultaneously. They will not be sold as a pair. But I'm going to work on them together because they're inspired by the couple that is my son-in-law's grandparents. They're very lovely, sweet people. Uh, I had options of hope or peace and I've had a vote for hope. And then so far I've had a vote for a little red hen journal. And then others, let me throw this in here. Um, there's still peace. I can do any kind of garden one, but specifically focusing on a botanical one or a roses or a general garden springtime theme. Farm and country or farm animals theme. Hearth and home, which is like domestic and like using a cookbook and adding in like sewing and cooking and all those home life kind of things. Domesticity. A sewing one, a handyman one, our choices, this and that, eclectic junky journal, or um, I did forget to mention last time, I do want to do one based on um, blue china because I love vintage, vintage dishes and I just got inspired and thought it would be really fun to do one that's themed around blue china. And that could also incorporate, you know, a hearth and home kind of a feeling. So yeah, go ahead and vote. And let's move on to our quote of the day. That we're reading from this cute little book called Christmas Cheer by Vicki Howard. It's got lots of fun little pages and gorgeous little illustrations. Arms are full of bundles, hearts with love or flow. The real old Christmas spirit sets our hearts aglow. And that was copied off of the Christmas postcard from 1915. And then the one on the next page says, when we hear others laugh and sing, we catch the spirit true. We lift our voices, join the throng and sing of Christmas too. And that comes from a Christmas joy book published in 1925. That's sweet, look at the little snowmen, they're all caroling. So with that, this is airing the week of Christmas. I hope you all have a blessed and happy Christmas. We are going to go on a Christmas lights caravan. So on Christmas Eve, we've been joining son-in-law's clan. They do really fun stuff. We all go over to Mimi and Poppy's and we've been included the last few years. They do like a white elephant gift exchange and we all just have food and we do it after their Christmas service at their church, their Christmas Eve service. So this year, Christmas Eve service will be online and then we are going to meet in the church parking lot as family groups and we'll all be contained to our cars and somebody is making a map and then we're gonna just caravan around and look at all the Christmas lights. So that will be a lot of fun. I hope and pray that you all have a blessed and peaceful Christmas. Again, try to, try to take those fun traditions that you've had and retrofit them for COVID Christmas 2020, and it'll give us all something to talk about. I wish you all the best in the new year. And of course, I'll be back to see you next week. So until then, be inspired and do something creative. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.